Aloha and welcome to this module or this uh, actual this, this overview of the play example login system and it's going to serve as a introduction to a very simple form of authorization and authentication in the play framework. Let's talk about what we mean by authorization and authentication. Authentication is basically how you verify who the visitors to your site actually is and that's typically through some kind of login process. Authorization is the ability to control what information a user has access to based upon their authenticated identity. So there's basically two parts. One is figuring out who the user is or forcing the user to declare who they are in some way that is trusted. And then secondly, once you know that trusted identity, deciding what exactly they can do. So the site looks like this. It's got a um, a simple home page and then there's a login page and once you've uh, filled out your credentials you can go ahead and actually access a profile page um, which, uh, which unauthenticated users can't access. So that's pretty simple and we'll do a little, um, a little uh, demo of it in a, in a second. Um, but given that kind of high level overview I want to say that the approach that I'm going to present to you in this module I call mock-up strength. It's a, it's a nice approach in that it's very easy to understand how it works, very, very easy to implement, and um, enables you to kind of implement really whatever kind of, you know, um, behavior for the site that you, you need um, in a fairly easy and, and fast manner. Problems with it um, are numerous, okay? You're sending the credentials in the clear via HTTP. Um, you're storing the credentials in the clear. In fact, I, I commit the credentials for this site to, to GitHub, which is, you know, a huge no-no. You can't use third-party authentication systems like Google or Yahoo or LinkedIn or Facebook or whatever. Um, and it doesn't show how you do the registration workflow. Typically with registration, you would type out, you know, your, your information and an email address, and then the system would generate an email to that email account with some long string that the user has to then uh, click on from within their mailer in order to confirm the registration. And that's how you guarantee that people can only register accounts with email addresses that they actually have access to. And that, that's not provided in this system. Um, if you want to, uh, there are play plugins that provide all these facilities, but they're a little more complicated to install and use. Um, so. Uh, you know, for, for mock-up purposes, you might want to go with this approach. For production purposes, you're going to have to do something else. So, for authentication, <coughs> um, we hardwire some users in the global.java class. You'll see how we um, define a simple user that's, that's predefined in the system and data about that user is stored in a, in a model. We have a login template that implements authentication that requests the email and password. And then there's a validate method associated with that form that determines whether or not the, the user is valid and does the right kind of thing if, if, if it's not. Once we have a valid login, we're going to set um, a key value pair in the session state. And then there's a logout method that, that clears the, the session state. Authorization. In this particular system, we just have one page called profile. To, as an example of a page that you only want authenticated users to access. Um, and you can see that we have a, and the way that we do this is through this uh, class called secure.java that extends security.authenticator. And it has to override two methods, get username and on unauthorized. The get username is used by the play framework to figure out whether or not the particular um, user is, is, uh, the visitor is, is, is authentic or what, what their level of authentication is and then if it's not then um, here the un unauthorized method determines what play should do in that case and so to use those methods all you do is you annotate any of your controller actions uh, that you don't that you want only authenticated users to access with this security.authenticated secure.class annotation so it's pretty simple really Okay, so in the UI, there's basically two parts to the UI. There's the pages that anybody can see, like the home page and the login page, and then there's the page that, uh, or the stuff that only authenticated users get to see, which is the profile page and the logout link. And then you'll see in the nav bar, 
Um, in the main template, you'll see how we actually implement that, the, the differential links and so forth. Okay, so in summary, there's three things you got to do to implement authentication and authorization. First, you have to have in your model, you have to have some information about users so that you can check and that's where their credentials and stuff are going to be. You have an authentication part, which is basically implementing the login page and maybe a registration page um, with validation. And then you have an authorization um, step in which you separate, um, you decide which parts of your user interface are going to be um, protected and only available to logged in users and then the pages that anybody can access. And then you'll also have some, some logic in your links, in, I'm sorry, logic in your templates to decide what links are accessible depending upon the authentication status. Okay, so that's, that's how that works. Let's go now to the actual running system so you get a sample of it. So if we just go to, here's the, the home page, looks like this, it has a login link. And then um, there's one user that's defined smith uh, at example.com and the password is password. And then once we've entered the correct credentials, um, we can, uh, we see that now smith is in the, the nav bar and there's a logout link. We can go back to the home page. Smith is still in the nav bar. There's still a logout link. We can go back to this profile page, which is only accessible um, if uh, the user's logged in, we can now log out, and we can see that we, can, we can't go to back to that profile page. In fact, the system's going to direct us to the login page, and if we type in something silly, then um, you know, we get an error message from the, the system. Okay, So that's basically all there is to it. It's a pretty, it's a pretty simple system, but it's, it demonstrates the key capabilities. You, know, you have to log in. You uh, can't... <coughs> If you don't provide the right credentials, the system doesn't let you log in. Once you're logged in, you can access, um, you know, kind of additional pages, and then there's a logout link. Okay, so let's see how we actually do that. For that, I'm just going to go to the overview page and step you through the code. Okay, so if we look at the models package, this is where we implement our information about users. Um, and we have a little class that, you know, records information about user, their name and email. And we also have a little class that uh, collects a database uh, or a, you know, an in-memory database or repository of information about users. Um, we only have one user to find in the system, so it's you know, kind of overkill. But you know, um, in terms of copying code, this provides you know, some, some ability for you to get things going um, quickly. Uh, so that's the models package. And then in the global class, this is where, when the system starts up, we're going to predefine a user. Um, we'll predefine their name. We'll predefine their email that they have to log in. And we predefine their password as being password. Note that we are committing the credentials to GitHub. That's like really poor practice. Um, later on, or in, in another section of my course that I teach about this stuff, I show how you can use environment variables so you don't commit this to, um, you don't commit credentials to GitHub. but um, to simplify the, the ex exposition of this technology, of this technique, it made sense just to, to um, commit them. But in practice, you never want to do that. Okay. The login view um, provides this, this login form. And to see that, we have to go to uh, here. Here's the login form. And, um, you know, it's pretty simple. Bootstrap 3. Uh, with the forum class, and we've just got a text field um, and a password field, and we do kind of the standard Twitter bootstrap stuff to to um, display errors. Okay, so that there's nothing really that um, you know complicated about that. So let me go back, um, and the um, here's the validate method, which the form. Uh, processing when we do the bind from request we're going to call this method and basically we check to make sure that the, the the user submitted email and password is valid in our little database of, of uh, user info and if it's not we're going to raise validation errors on the two fields okay no big deal okay um, now in the login okay so um, the first thing we do is we do this bind from request, which calls that validation routine. 
And then we can use this has errors method to check whether the validation uh, um, resulted in an error. If there were errors, we'll, we'll put into the flash scope um, this message, which will be printed out in the view, and we'll return a bad request. Okay, otherwise, we uh, will um, clear the session and add this um, email attribute to it to indicate the you know the, the currently um, logged in user authenticated user and uh, then we go to the profile page just automatically okay you may or not want to go to the to a profile page in your application depending upon what you're trying to accomplish okay so that's pretty easy also okay and then we get to the secured class and this is where you know there's a little bit of uh, kind of play specific idiom that you just have to understand in order to, to, to do it. Um, so you're going to have a class that's going to extend security.authenticator and in order to create protected pages which can only be accessed um, if you're logged in, you have to override these two methods, get username and on unauthorized. The get username is used by the play system to figure out whether or not the user is authenticated and uh, the on unauthorized is what the, system, what the play system uses in order to um, make sure in order to figure out what to do when the users in fact not authenticated okay so how are those things actually um, employed they're employed by simply annotating a particular controller method with this security dot authenticated secure dot class okay and and so you don't have to do anything in your actual code to check for authentication um, you just know that if this code is actually executed, this annotation has succeeded in making sure that the user's authenticated, and the annotation will actually result in the user being redirected to a login page if, in fact, they try to, <coughs> you know, invoke this method without um, without having the right credentials. Okay. So um, that's part of the so that's that's the first part of this class okay these two overridden methods now there's a, there's three more methods which are static methods okay and thus can be accessed by any controller method not just the controller methods that have this annotation but any controller method can invoke secure.getUser or secure.isLogedIn passing the context and that enables any controller method to figure out is there a logged in user and who that logged in user is. Okay, so there's kind of two parts to this secured class that you want to implement. The top part is for protecting pages. The bottom part is for allowing your system to implement logic, differential logic, depending upon the, the um, you know, authentication, the login status of the person, okay, of the visitor. All right, so now let's look at our main.scala.template. You can see that it's, it's going to take a page name, and then it's always going to take a Boolean, which is whether or not the user's logged in, and if the user's logged in, info about that user. And so it does kind of what you'd, what you'd expect. Um, it will, you know, if the user is logged in, it's going to show the profile link in the menu. Um, and you know, note that even if the profile link is not displayed, as we showed in the in the demo part of it, I could type in that URL for the profile page, and the system would still not let me get there. So this is this is just a usability thing um, to not show a user a link that that they that clicking on you know will take them to the login page. Okay, but um, but it's it doesn't actually implement kind of a secured mechanism. It's just a usability help okay and then we have another one to decide whether or not we're going to show a, um, the, the user's email address and a logout link or a login link depending upon whether or not they're logged in okay so to, to see how that works um, what we do is I'm going to show you examples of how we call those static methods in the secured class within our controller so in the index page we call the secured static method is logged in and we pass it this method that's available within the controller called context uh, you know with no args okay so that's how we get the context object the HTTP context object 
um, which we're going to pass into security as logged in, and that'll return a Boolean if the if there is a logged in user when we're visiting the index page, and um, this will return either null or uh, the actual user info object, um, to, you know, depending upon whether the user user is logged in when they execute this page. And you can see that this is just used consistently throughout um, all of these methods. We're always passing to our templates, you know, the status of whether the user is logged in or not. Okay, um, so here's that. All right. Okay, so um, I showed you the context sensitive navbar. That's basically about it for this um, demo. I talked about the shortcomings before. So uh, I hope you like this little overview and um, have fun using authentication and authorization in play.